Hello guys, welcome back to YouTube channel and welcome to today's video. I hope you're doing really, really well. As promised, in 2024, I've decided to do a monthly budget video. Just honestly, like this is the exercise that I do every single month anyway. I just didn't really think it'd be interesting enough to film, but based on my yearly, like annual budget video that I did at the beginning of January, I honestly had so much feedback saying that people wanted to see more, like sort of budgeting content, real life, just standard, like how things change month on month, how you adapt, what you do, where you put your money to save in like the little pots of, you know, to stash away cash for like a later date to save towards certain things like a holiday or or your car insurance or whatever it might be and you know what I thought I'm gonna try and do a video every single month because I do this anyway I've got a nap time basically to do this so I thought what's the harm in filming it and if it helps someone or inspires someone to sit down and just do it and like figure out their own finances then that's a massive bonus obviously I'm not in any way a financial advisor I'm in no way an expert I'm not telling anyone this is what they should do I'm literally just showing you what I do on a month by month basis and if anyone has any good tips or or tricks or anything like that then I'm all ears because like I say I'm no expert but I'm just gonna sit down go through my spreadsheet go through this month's incomings outgoings expenses all the savings all that kind of stuff um, and yeah we're just gonna go for it together I'm just editing this video and I wanted to come on beforehand just to say I do talk about savings and I talk about investments and things like that and I'm fully aware that not everyone is in a position to be saving and investing right now times are tough it's really difficult everything's so expensive and wages have not risen to where they need to be to meet that you know cost of living like it just hasn't um so i i apologize if it comes across like i haven't i'm not aware of that because i totally am um i just didn't say it in the video for whatever reason but i hope it doesn't come across insensitive or anything like that it's just what i do in my personal circumstances i'm very very lucky that I've managed to pay off some debt very recently so I've got some extra income instead of having to put it towards that but I know that's not the case for everyone but yeah I hope you enjoy. Before we get into it I did want to say if you haven't watched my annual like 2024 budget video before this one I would highly recommend watching that or any of the others that I've done from previous years just because it's a better overview of like my budgeting system I guess for a whole year whereas this is going to look at a specific month and how things can fluctuate and things can change. Also, my budget spreadsheet that I'm using in that video and in this video is my 2024 budget spreadsheet that I've put over on Etsy. I'll pop a link down in the description box if you wanted to purchase it. It's £3.60 and oh my gosh, let me tell you, it has saved me so much over the past probably about four or five years that I've been using a spreadsheet. It's developed a little bit, but it's very simple to use. You can literally just type in your figures, your incomings, your outgoings, and it does it like tells you whether you're in, in the clear or you need to make more money or you need to reduce your outgoings. And you kind of really allocate certain amounts of money to things and see it really nicely and visually. I love it. Not everyone loves a spreadsheet. Some people like a pen and paper, that's totally fine. But yeah, I'll link it down in the description if you are interested. But yeah, let's get into it. So first of all, I just wanted to do like a little recap of the January because obviously I was kind of guessing a little bit what my income might be based on the fact that I'm on maternity leave and, uh, you know, I, I it was my first month that I would be getting statutory maternity pay and I wasn't really sure on how much that was going to be. I had very, very conservatively estimated that it would be £600. It was significantly more, which helped me out massively. So I have updated this. It was actually 792 but not only only that I actually didn't realize that I'd still get some of my salary paid as well and I think I think that is because I stopped working like halfway through a month so I still had like half a month's pay essentially or like a quarter of a month's pay and my statutory maternity pay in one month I think I'm not entirely sure why I was given as much as I was given but it you know it came up on my payslips and everything and this is the amount that I was given after tax maternity pay and, and my actual salary so I had a lot more money in the bank from my employment that I thought I was going to have I had because I thought it was you know going to be a lot less than that already put aside two thousand pounds to give myself from the business um well I say two thousand pounds minus the four hundred pounds tax um but that actually meant that my month looked a lot better than I thought it was going to 
So my actual total income after all of this added up was actually over 3,000, which was significantly more than I thought it was going to be, which I'm obviously very, very grateful for. I know it's not gonna happen every single month, but it did help me out massively in January, um, especially given it was such a long month. Um, so yeah, my income last month was over 3,000, and my outgoings are the same as they were in that last video that we looked at. So here are all of my expenses, me and my partner share half the bills 50 50 that's just how we do it every single person is going to be different every single circumstance can be different you do how you need to do it but we basically split everything 50 50 in terms of the household bills the childcare bills anything that's joint basically we just half it it's just what works for us obviously if our circumstances changed that might change um but based on our incomes you know we both earn similar amounts you know similar less than this usually but yeah similar amounts so yeah uh, so it kind of just seems fair for us and um, so those are our joint outgoings and that actually goes straight from our individual bank accounts to our joint account and gets paid all the bills get paid directly from our joint account so that money basically just disappears and then we don't see it individually um so that's quite helpful i think when it just like goes and you don't even get the chance to touch the money then scrolling down i've got 236 pounds worth of well personal expenses i guess so that's um for me it's actually only looking like petrol and fitness classes at the moment i don't have any other personal bills things like my phone um i actually put on the business because I use my phone very like basically all the time for work in terms of Instagram, YouTube, all that kind of stuff. Um, so that is actually a work expense for me. Um, and then when it comes down to my savings, this is where I actually have to do something. So for my savings, I have an account with Hyperjar and I manually transfer money into that account every single month and then divvy up within pots. I'm gonna talk a little bit about Hyperjar in a bit when we talk about February's expenses, just because I'm gonna show you exactly what my pot looks like like um, I'm going to show you how I allocate the money um, and how, e how easy it is or what the drawbacks maybe of that app might be um, but yeah that's how I do it so basically what I do is add up what my total is going to be obviously like I said I had additional income that I didn't expect that month so I actually ended up putting more money into investments than I had expected I didn't expect to be able to invest over the course of my maternity leave but obviously having been you know given more money than I expected I've decided to invest £200 of that. Well, again, we'll talk about investments a little bit later. Um, and then also I put £400 towards a new bathroom, which I'm very excited about. Um, we've been really looking forward to redoing our bathroom. And because of the extra income that I got from my work, I actually have been able to put £400 towards that directly instead of doing it over the course of the next four or five months and having to get finance, which, you know, is a massive win. I would personally like to get finance as little as possible, especially when it comes to, you know, uncertain times, maternity leave, not really knowing what my like situation is going to be when I return back to work, etc. Um, so yeah, the fact that we were able to pay that outright is a massive win. Um, and we've actually purchased that. We haven't done it, but we've purchased it in the January sale. So it was a lot cheaper than it was going to be when we were thinking about buying it later in the spring. So that was a massive win. Pretty much everything else is the same. Um, and yeah, same here on my like, days out, hair, kids clothes and my clothes. I've spoke about that already. The reason they're zero is because I'm on a vintage hype at the moment. So selling all the kids older clothes on vintage and using that money in the balance on vintage to then buy new clothes for them. Brilliant. Um, yeah, it's working so far. Uh, so although Hallie has started weaning, my youngest has started weaning and the stains, the clothes aren't holding up as well as they would have when she was newborn. But anyway, that's why we are with that. So that was my recap for January. A much better month than I had expected, which is obviously brilliant. It also kind of just meant we had more money left over than I thought, um, like the £174.50 that was completely unallocated. So that was just free money, not free money, but like money that's unallocated in my bank account that wasn't dedicated towards days out, wasn't dedicated towards eating out, takeaways, getting my nails done, anything like that. Like I already specifically put money aside for those things because I know I want to do those every month. Whereas, um, yeah, the extra money was just extra money to put towards fun, or you could put towards it, you know, your savings and things like that. I have to admit, I put it towards fun. Me and my husband went uh, on a lovely trip to France for literally 36 hours on our own, no kids, and we had a lovely meal, and I was able to, you know, really just go and enjoy that and not worry about it financially, which 
you know, I didn't think I'd be able to do that on uh, my first month on statutory maternity pay. Let me tell you that. So it was a massive turn up for the books. Um, but then we have, you know, come into February um, and that's where I wanted to talk to you guys about how I'm going to allocate all of my money this month, a much tighter month, not, not massively tight, but a lot tighter than last month. Okay, so we're in February 2024. It is payday today and I've had all of my money in from my employment or my statutory maternity pay paid by my employer. Um, and it was the same as it was last month. It was £792. Like I said, previously I'd estimated about £600 because firstly, I hadn't actually looked it up properly this time around. I was just going off of what I got paid last time. Uh, and secondly, it's gone up a lot more since I had my first baby. And with tax and things like that, I wasn't sure how it was going to work. So it actually worked out that it was £792, which is £192 more than I thought it was going to be originally. So that's a massive, massive win for me. That's after tax. That's what came into my bank account this morning uh, on payday. So that was a win. Um, and then based on that and how much I'd been able to save through the business account, I'm going to be able to give myself £2,000 from the business on top of that. The £2,000 though comes with the caveat that I need to put £400 away for tax. Uh, so it's actually only £1,600, but it does mean in total, I've got a grand total income of £2,392, which is actually more than I earn working four days a week um, at my job if I was obviously not on maternity leave. So you know, I really, really can't complain. In terms of my expenses are like total joint account living costs are pretty much the same as they were last month. Slightly cheaper though, just because groceries and food and nappies, wipes, all that kind of stuff is actually slightly cheaper in Feb just because of how short the month is. So the month is obviously four weeks rather than five. And um, so food shop's not going to be as much this like month in terms of like between the paydays um so i've only put 200 pounds for that that includes like i said groceries like all the food for the house hello freshes and all that kind of stuff and um like my share of the nappies my share of the wipes formula all that kind of stuff um now like i say we split this 50 50 our food bill for the month is definitely not 200 pounds but it shouldn't it shouldn't surpass 400 and if it does we will top that up from our personal accounts. Um, and when I say we, I probably mean Ash. Um, so <laughs> that's probably where that is. I'm not gonna lie to you and say that we always stick to this budget, we don't. But if it's in, if it's not in the joint account, we're less likely to, to go, oh, we should go to the shop and get this thing that we don't actually really need. It's just because we fancy it. Um, it kind of like restrains us a little bit, I guess, on the, on the food shop, which I think is good, especially in this climate where everything just costs so much money. The only other thing that is slightly cheaper is George's football, uh, because the first month that he signed up for it, uh, he had like an admin fee of like three quid. Um, so it was 15 pounds, gone down to 12. So that means the total that got transferred out of my personal bank account this morning into our joint account was £1,415.50. So that is gone. I cannot see that anymore. That is disappeared. Um, and then when I scroll down, like I say, I need to make sure that I keep about £236 in my personal account um, for my expenses like petrol and like for my fitness class. Obviously, I explained to you that I don't really have any other bills come out of my personal account. Um, so that's like the amount that I need, to, I know I need to have in there. Obviously, when I buy petrol, that will go down, but you get the gist. Like that's money that I need to protect. And then when it comes to my savings, I like to get rid of this, like put it into a completely separate place because I really don't like having access to money because I will spend it. I'm sorry, but that is the truth of it. I will spend it. Obviously this month's not gonna look as like lucrative as last month because I don't have, you know, the extra income from my salary that was, you know, an extra amount that I didn't expect to be coming. This month is just the statutory maternity pay plus the money that I give myself in the business. So instead of it being £1,091 that I'm going to put into my savings, it's actually £571. Um, the one is random, I know, but it's just because we have a payment for a holiday we're going on in like 18 months time, it's £111 uh, per month. So that's where the random amount comes from. And then I also have these nice to haves. And if, look, if anything happened, I'd get rid of these nice to haves pretty much immediately, like days out, hair, like you know eating out like nails all that kind of stuff like they are 
you know, very negotiable. Like we don't need to do those things, but if we have 70 quid spare, I'll pop the money in. So in total, obviously that's 641 pounds that I need to transfer out of my account. I do not want to see it because if I have access to it, I will spend it. So what I end up doing is actually setting up a transfer, a bank transfer straight out of my personal account that all of my income comes into, setting up that transfer and sending it to a different account, different app, different like bank everything um so that i can then divide that up and put that into pots i've mentioned it before and i use an account called hyperjar hyperjar is like a separate bank account basically it's got its own card you can use it as your account um and you can pay from it to it you can link any jar to your wallet so you can actually spend say for example you wanted to get some petrol you can use your hyperdrive account it is another bank account basically but it's one of the online only apps where you can you know separate all of your money into little pots and it's quite convenient on the phone i find and i love how visual it is rather than having all of your money just dumped into one place it's dumped in and then individually like divided up which i find so useful there are other accounts that do very similar things with like either jars or um pops like whatever they would call it on their own one for me i chose hyperjar just because i thought it was a good app when i got it it was completely free it is still free however there are charges i believe on if you go over a certain amount of transfers in a month they might like charge a tiny percentage um on that it's for me negligible and i'm not one to be transferring in and out of the account loads i literally do the one transfer per month and if then i want to pay for something and i don't want to use my hyperjar card for whatever reason then i'll transfer it back but uh, like very rarely do i do that so that one transfer doesn't cost me anything so for me and my uses it's still a completely free app and a platform to use okay so i thought it'd be useful if i actually go through exactly how i do the savings things because i think that incomings and outgoings is fairly simple but the savings thing i think is something that that's, this is the actual like task that I have to do every single month unless things change obviously to do with bills but most of the time they don't what I would say now my savings is the big thing that helps me manage my money and not all of it is savings for the long term a lot of it's savings for this month but it helps me manage it and how I do it like I said I go on my app my bank account app and then decide how much money I want to transfer into my savings I now know that it's 641 pounds based on my spreadsheet based on the amount of money I've got coming in this month and what I want to put away for certain things. So 641, I'm going to round it up because we've got some money left over. It says we've got 99 pounds left for the month left over. So I'm going to round it up to uh, 650 just because I like round figures. I'm going to pay that today. No, it's not a scam. Authorised payment. Thank you very much. Then what I've done is opened my Hyperjar account. So you can see here, basically I'm going to show you exactly what my account looks like, how I allocate the money, what I've got in certain pots and stuff at the moment. But at the moment, you can see at the top, it's got £700 available, which is unallocated money. And then you've also got a total balance of just over £2,000. So the £650 that I transferred into it today, um, plus I, there must have been £50 left over from last month that I didn't allocate. Um, and then what I'm going to do is divvy all of that up into these pots based on what I had on my spreadsheet and then just based on how much I've got in each of these pots at the moment, whether I need to put that much money in, if I've got leftover money in there, I can maybe reallocate it and jig it around. And this is how I like to budget my, like all of my money mainly, but actually my savings aren't always just for a rainy day. They're actually sometimes also just for like monthly things. So for example, if I wanted to um, get a takeaway, the one down here, you can see that I've got a takeaway pot for £70. I don't need £70 in a takeaway pot. What that means is we haven't got takeaways for a couple of months, which means that's why there's £70 left over in there because I allocate like 20 quid, 30 quid or whatever here and there. And there's £70 left in there, which means I don't have to allocate this month's £20 towards takeaways because I don't need £90 in the takeaway pot. So I like to look at this and figure out how I can maybe reallocate that £20. I might put that towards days out. I might put that towards holiday. Do you know what I mean? Like I can really jig things, but I really love having these different pots of money because I now know that like for the next birthday that comes up, Ash's birthday is in March. So the next birthday that comes up, I know that I've got £80 towards his birthday present already. That's without having allocated any of the £700 in my wallet. Whereas if this money was in my current account, I would spend it. 
I know that. I wouldn't know what things like specific money is for. So if I had £700 in my current account, you're telling me that I'm not going to go and do a shopping spree. Like, you're telling me I'm not going to do that. You're telling me I'm not going to go to Zara and get loads of kids' clothes. You're telling me that I'm not going to go... Like, do you know what I mean? It's so much easier to spend unless you have, like, this layer... Like, layer of, I don't know, like, protection against your own yourself. Like, I don't know. For me, it works. Okay, so this is what my Hyperdryer account is looking like now. Like you can see, I've still got £250 available. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do with that in a minute. But you can see the balance is exactly the same, and I've just allocated the money as I see fit according to what my spreadsheet said but also then what I've thought as I as I've been going through it basically so I've still got a, a little jar here called corner sofa bit um, and that's because we have a modular sofa and we really want to get a corner bit for it but they're so expensive and I don't think we're going to be able to get that really anytime soon I am going to put bits and bobs towards it throughout the months um, and then when it comes to maybe like halfway through the year we can see how much money each of us has got and see if we can like go halves on the corner sofa bit because we would really like it but it's not the priority at all um, and then secondly I've got my emergency fund I've got £100 in here like I said I've got some money tucked away in a different account already as well but I'm going to transfer that over to this account at some point and then that can be my emergency fund should I require it? And then in the other purple colours, I've got all car related things. So I've got AA breakdown cover, car insurance, car maintenance, and new car. Um, so my AA breakdown cover, I pay for that annually. Um, so when it comes around for me to renew my car, my AA breakdown cover, I'll have some money in there to pay off the whole year rather than it being a monthly expense. That's just my preferred way of doing it. It works out slightly cheaper and I'm able to do it as long as I actually manually do it, um, which I don't mind doing. So that's why I've got that. Um, and then for my car insurance, again, I do similar thing for that. I pay that yearly because it works out cheaper. Car insurance has gone up so much recently, but I put away £50 a month for that every month. And I think I have some like hung over from last year as well so that's why it's random amount six months i think it was because my car insurance this year i actually renew mine every january which is an annoying time to do it um it was like a random amount which is why there's just like random pennies in this but yeah 160 pounds 51 is what i've got in there at the moment car maintenance that's for mot services if anything goes wrong if i need new parts for my car anything like that um obviously Fingers crossed, I've got my MAT next month and I'm hoping that it's not going to surpass this. Um, I've actually got a service as well, so I probably will have to put some more money towards that, but at least I've got some money towards it, like tucked away, again, outside of my personal current account. Then I've got new car. I don't want a new car yet, but obviously new cars cost a lot of money. Um, I've got my Nissan Qashqai, which I love, but in maybe a year, two years, um, I might want a new one and if I've got again money tucked away I won't have to get finance which is probably something that I don't really want to do um so if I can put away some money towards it that would be massively massively helpful in the future my future self will thank me for putting away like bits and bobs and then in the green ones I've got things like holidays Christmas and birthdays again holidays I've got 450 pounds towards separate holidays this year so um me and the family are going away to forest holidays I don't know if you guys know it it's like a center park but a cheaper version um so some of that can go towards that holidays like a log cabin loads of like activities for the kids and george is gonna absolutely love it ash will love it as well i'm sure i'll love it as well but um it's mainly for the boys i'm not gonna lie to you um they have got a spa though so i'm definitely gonna use some of this money for a massage and i think we're also gonna go to haven at some point maybe in easter or maybe in like october that kind of vibe so i've got money tucked away for that already which is really really good i also have a holiday payment that comes out of my current account every month for 111 pounds that is for a holiday that we've got planned in 2025 for a family friend's wedding which i'm so looking forward to it's a big one it's abroad um it's a big holiday i'm really looking forward to it but that's going to probably be our first abroad holiday and that account that money comes out of my account every month it's like an interest-free thing to like jet to or whoever um so that's like our holiday money set up that's how we save for our holidays and then I've got Christmas, like I said, obviously £200, January, February, put away £100. So, you know, I'm hoping to be able to do that throughout every month. Fingers crossed. Um, birthdays, I've put away 110 so far. Like I say, Ash's birthday is in March. My mum's birthday is in April. I've then got, well, Hallie's birthday. Wow, I can't believe that's even a thing. Hallie's birthday in July. Um, and then, yeah, as the, as the year goes on, George's is September. There's other people's birthdays sprinkled throughout that. Nieces, nephews, you know etc um 
So yeah, money in the birthday account is always needed. Uh, 30 quid here or there, you know, it's a good thing to have access to. Baby classes, I've got 100 pounds because sometimes you pay a fiver, sometimes you pay 20 quid for like a course. Sometimes you pay a lot more, like, you know, it just depends. I do wanna find a really good baby class for me and Hallie to go to. I haven't found one that I love yet. But if I do, then I'd love to pay like for a course and have something to do every Tuesday, for example, with me and her. Um, so yeah, that's the money aside for that. Um, days out, 150. That was actually in there already. I don't know how we've got a surplus of money. I think it's because where I've been putting away like 50 pounds a month or whatever and then not used it because I've used money from my current account or whatever it might have been. I've got that money away, which is really handy because days out are so expensive with kids. Even if you pack a pack lunch, even if you like, you know, plan everything, you still end up spending a ridiculous amount of money. Um, even just go into like, uh, just not even go into something somewhere extravagant. Like if you went to the zoo, it would genuinely cost like 80, 90 pounds at this rate. It's crazy. So having that money there is, is very, very, very helpful. Then all of the yellow ones are like hair, kids clothes, my clothes, nails, takeaways really really like i could drop these easily like we don't have to do any of these things really like the kids clothes they've got plenty of clothes do you know what i mean unless they need like new shoes or whatever it would be um they don't really need new clothes same for me i don't need new clothes nails and hair and takeaways like obviously they're very very luxury things to have like i don't need to have those but yeah obviously if the money's there and you enjoy doing something it's nice to have the flexibility if you've like planned ahead it's nice to have the flexibility to like be able to do those things so that's why those are there but like i said i could drop them very easily if we didn't uh have the money so yeah like i said i've actually got the 250 pounds left in the available pot and what i'm going to do with that is put it into investments which is going to be the next portion i guess of this video um and it's just going to be talking slightly about investments i am no expert but yeah let's try to do this Okay, so something for 2024 that I want to do is get back to investing for me personally. So we invest for the kids every month. They have a ISA each um, and, and their child benefit goes into their ISA. And that's been the case ever since George was born and ever since Hallie was born. So hopefully by the time they're 18, they're going to have a really good pot of money to set them up, hopefully to get them on the housing like property ladder. Um, if it's going to be enough by then, who knows? But like I say, we're putting away their child benefit um, and that's about 80, 90 pounds a month. I can't exactly remember off the top of my head. Obviously when you have two kids, they don't get, you don't get like two lots of child benefit that you would get if you just had one kid. You have a smaller amount. So we just split that equally between them. And then anything that George has in his account, by the time he turns 18, we'll just top Hallie's account up with that amount by the time she gets to 18. I hope that makes sense. Um, so they're gonna get equal amounts basically. But yeah, ISAs are obviously a really great way of getting high interest, tax-free um, and you know saving that away having a really great savings pot aside for your kids so that's what we're doing for the kids and if you want me to do like a bigger video on what we're doing for the kids and what it means and how much money they're projected to get just based on putting that you know 60 70 80 quid whatever it might be into their account every month what is projected to be when they're 18 is significant in comparison to what they would have if we just put it into a savings account. I also used to put money into investments into a stocks and shares ISA for myself. I and I did that for a good couple of years and made like really good like interest on things and then pulled out all of my money. Um, and that was for a series of reasons, not least the stock market was a bit of a scary place at the time. I wasn't really that knowledgeable. I had quite a lot of my money in that account um, and we had big expenses coming up. We had solicitors fees to pay for moving houses, selling and buying a house. We had a wedding, we had a big honeymoon as well, all of those things, but we didn't go into debt for any of those things. Like those things were paid off with the money that I had in investments. Um, so that was great. I do, however, think that was probably the wrong move. I think possibly I was just a little bit scared and I took the money out too soon. What I would like to do is start investing again properly every single month, a small amount, I say a small amount, 200 pounds is not a small amount by any means, but if I put in 200 pounds every single month and see like, and don't literally don't touch it for 10 or 20 years, the amount of money you have the potential to earn in interest is 
so significant and again if you just put that 200 pounds a month away into a savings account even if it's a high interest savings account of like two or three percent or four percent even which is quite difficult to find if you're just doing a savings account it's nowhere near as much as you have the potential to earn in an ISA, a stocks and shares ISA for example. Obviously with the stock market and with investing it always comes at a risk, your money can go up down up down, you could get back less money than you put in, that is a real risk. However over a trend of like 10 years or 20 years it's very rare that you don't get a return of investment that's not more than like seven percent obviously if you're going to be putting in 200 pounds a month every single month for the next 10 years that's like twenty four thousand pounds that's a lot of money anyway but then you add seven percent interest on that compounding every single year it ends up being a lot more a lot more anyway so basically what i'm saying is that's what I'm, my aim is to do i would love to do a little video on it again i'm not an expert by any means um but i did i did really really enjoy doing that and i would like to start doing that again now and really really just get to the point where i don't touch it like i'm not i i feel like i'm a lot better with my personal finances in terms of putting money away into savings accounts or little jars on my hyper jar account for example for items and things that i want to buy or like save up for whereas this should be a long-term investment something that I'm not going to even touch for years and years and years and don't need to touch because I don't need to have access to it and can just let it concur interest concur interest concur interest over the course of like 20 years um, and then hopefully that's going to be a nice little pot of money to like retire on or pay off the mortgage or whatever it might be so that's my plan um that's what i'm gonna do uh for the 200 pounds or the 250 pounds this month but 200 pounds at least every month for as long as i possibly can obviously i'm not saying that i'm always gonna be ha able to have like 200 pounds left over every single month that might not be the case but as we've seen i've got a lot of things that i would much rather drop nails i'd much rather drop hair i'd much rather drop um what else was there on that or like takeaways i'd much rather drop those things and then put that money towards investments that's actually going to it's going to pay dividends literally as well as interest um for me in the future and i've definitely got that much more of a mindset about the future now that i've got kids i did it last month and i'm going to do it this month of 250 pounds in my hyper account is going to go straight into my trading 212 account which by the way is my preferred place to invest it's I, I really like it it's very easy to do it and what I do is I don't choose individual like, companies or anything to invest in I invest in index funds and index funds for me I personally think are a great way especially for beginners but also I think probably just for like general investors a great way to track a market so that's basically what it is an index fund tracks a, like a market of either a country or a sector or the world whatever it might be i invest in two i do 60 percent into the um, us stock market essentially so that's called the s p 500 and also the FTSE 100 which is the uk market so those two markets are the ones that i i'm investing in uh the us market is significantly dominating like at the moment but you know everything ebbs and flows and blah, blah blah but they're the two that i invest in and they're you know they're they're fairly safe bets i think in the index fund the 500 top companies in the us and the 100 top companies in the uk they can change the top like people and top companies can change but it's not going to affect it's still going to track the top one so if they bump off you're not going to like your stock's not going to completely fall because you're tracking 499 others in the us so I, I just find it's a really nice varied approach especially for someone that's like fairly risk averse i'm the perfect customer for the s p 500 so yeah that is uh my plan that is what i was gonna talk to you guys about in terms of investing if you want me to do a more in-depth version for beginners people like me people like us like the people that watch this video are probably going to be in you know mums or not necessarily in the finance world like i certainly am not but yeah let me know if you wanted me to talk about investing for beginners or anything like that in a little bit more detail for me the prospect of compound interest is so exciting and really really significant until until it clicks like you won't get it and i want to kind of show you like a graph of like compound interest maybe if i do that video for how we invest for the kids you'll see like how that 60 pounds a month that we are going to invest for them over the course of 18 years from when they're born to when they turn 18 
what that then turns into, it's not just the amount you put away, it's the compounding interest on the amount you put away every single year. You get interest on top of your interest, on top of your, it, 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 it's mind blowing, it really is. However, I think that is probably for another video. Um, but yeah, that is what my sort of payday routine is. That's my every single month, my budgeting sort of strategy, like what I end up doing, how I put money away, how I save for things like holidays, birthdays, you know, all of my expenses, all of my incomings. Obviously, every month that's gonna change for me, especially because like I say, I'm on maternity leave, I'm hoping to take some extended like non-paid maternity leave um so so that's going to change as well and then obviously when i go back to work however that might look that's going to change again so yeah exciting times scary times but um yeah like i say i'm going to do this video every single month so if you like this video please give it a like and i will see you in the next one bye guys you glue all the pieces back together yeah you you take all my wrongs and make them better yeah you you're making me wanna try forever i feel so free oh my sweet baby